Hey everybody, I'm glad that you chose to join me in another Bible study in God's Word. And uh, I want to invite you to grab your Bibles, whether it be your phone, your device, or uh, a Bible like mine, however you get to God's Word. And I want you to open it this morning to Luke chapter 14. And we're going to be reading verses 15 through 24. To give you a little bit of a background, Jesus is at a supper after church on the Sabbath day. And he's there with some of the Pharisees and some of the church leaders, and, and he's talking to them, and he's using the fact that they're at the supper to tell parables about supper and to give advice and to give instruction and, and really to bring them to a place to where they realize that there's a great supper that they're invited to. And so as we look at Luke 14, verses 15 through 24, we're jumping into the middle of this story and we're seeing Jesus tell a parable of the Great Supper. So follow along with me here. I'm going to start reading in verse 15. Here's what it, what it says. It says, Now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you, have me excused. And another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to test them. I ask you, have me excuse. Still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it's done as you commanded, and still there's room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Now, as we look at this uh, parable, uh, there's some very interesting things, and I wonder what grabbed your attention as we were reading it. What was it about the story that stood out to you? Well, for me, I noticed uh, four very clear things that jumped out at me, and, and I want to look at each one. The first thing I noticed was the expectations of the master. Look at verse 16 and 17 again. It said, um, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. So what did the master expect? Well, he uh, prepared a great feast, a great supper, and he invited many people. And of course, he expected that they would come. It was the expectations of the master that people would show up after he had done all this work and, and uh, prepared, he just expected that they would come. Now, let me ask you a few questions. What would you say is God's expectation for you personally? What has he prepared for you to participate in? And are you committed to what God expects of you? Listen, the master had expectations that he prepared the supper and that people would come. And, and this is a parable uh, that, you know, a, a parable is this. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And so these questions that I'm asking you now uh, is pointing to the, the heavenly or the spiritual meaning for you. So, so what are God's expectations for you personally? What has he prepared for you to participate in? And are you committed to what God expects of you? Listen, I love 1 Corinthians 2.9. Listen to what it says. But as it's written, 
eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. We can't even imagine all that God has prepared for us. Why? Because we love him and he wants to bless us and he invites us into these blessings. He invites us to come and participate in what he's prepared. Those are the expectation of the master. Now, the next thing that I noticed was the excuses of the invited guests. Look at me at verse 18 again. It says, but they all with one accord begin to make excuse. The first said to him, I bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you, have me excuse. And another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excuse. Still another said, I've married a wife and therefore I cannot come the excuses of the invited guests. You know, maybe they felt there would be another dinner at a more convenient time. Their excuses were really about all the cares of the world. And, and so here's the question I want to ask you. When God invites you to join him in what he's doing, how many excuses do you have that keep you from doing his will and experiencing all that he's prepared for you? When you sense God leading you or calling you out or inviting you to something bigger than yourself, do you find yourself making all the excuses why you can't do it? And then you miss out on what he's prepared for you. That's a, that's a great question. That's something we really need to think about. Are we excuse makers uh, when God calls us to participate in what he's prepared? Now, the next thing I notice is the extension of the invitation. Look at verses 21 through 23. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, master, it's done as you commanded, and still there's room. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. The extension of the invitation. First, he extended it to his invited guests and they all made excuses to not come. Now, can you sense the urgency in that passage we just read? He said, go out quickly and invite people to come in. The great supper is ready, but the banquet hall is not filled. So the master extends his invitation to anyone that'll appreciate the opportunity to feast at his table. He's like, you know what? I've prepared it. They're not going to come, but somebody is going to benefit from my work and from what I've prepared. So let me ask you this question. Did you notice who he commanded to go out with a sense of urgency and compel them to come in? His servant, right? So are you God's servant? Let me ask you this. Are you going out with a sense of urgency, inviting and compelling anyone who will listen? Or do you live in a circle of pride, only associating with other proud people? See, that was the problem with the initial guests that were invited. They were proud. They were more focused on the things of the world. They were really just centered on themselves, focused on themselves, full of pride. And, you know, we have to be careful not to be caught up in the pride of this world. We have to be careful not to only associate with other proud people. I mean, there's so many ways today that we can get into our exclusive groups and, and totally shut out the world, totally miss what God's doing because we've got each other. And, and a lot of those folks that were invited, they lost out because they were caught up in their own pride, in their own um, self-centeredness, in the things that they felt were more important about this life. And so what happens because they uh, reject the invitation, then the master extends the invitation to anybody that will come. And then here's the last thing I noticed. I noticed the exclusion of the invited guest. Look at verse 24. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. 
Listen, they had their opportunity. He prepared it for them, and they were too busy to come. And it says it made him angry. We read that in verse 21. The excuses angered the master so much so that he declared that none of those who rejected his invitation would taste his supper. So let me ask you this question. Keeping in mind that a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly or a spiritual meaning. Let me ask you this question. Have you accepted the master's invitation yet? The invitation is an invitation to receive Christ as your Savior. The Bible teaches us that those who receive Christ become his bride, and there will be a supper one day, and it's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the invitation is extended to all. It's extended to me. I've received it. It's extended to you. Have you received it? Or have you made excuses over worldly cares at the risk of God excluding you? So here's the bottom line. There's a supper prepared and the house needs to be filled. So we need to shift our focus. We need to over invite. We need to get out of our friend zone, in other words, our comfort zone, and we need to extend the invitation to anyone who might come. Over invite people because some people are going to say, no, I can't come. So we need to keep it inviting. Remember the servant says, I've invited everybody you've told me to invite. And yet there's room. And he says, go out and beat the bushes, man. Go out and find anybody that will come. The bottom line for you and I as a servant of the Lord is to be inviting anyone that can come. So think about this. Imagine if you had the resources to provide a great supper and you filled it with the poor, the crippled, the broken, and the blind, those that never get an invitation to anything great or grand, imagine the appreciation they would express and the emotions that would well up inside of you. Can you imagine that? Well, you have the opportunity to do just that. And the opportunity is real. It's a parable, but it's about a true heavenly reality that's coming one day. To show you that, I want to go to one last passage. It's in Revelation 19. So quickly turn to Revelation 19, and I want you to read with me verses 6 through 9. Here's what it says. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Here's what I want you to hear, verse 9. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Listen, there is going to be a great supper one day. The master has made everything ready, and it's ready, and it's waiting, and he's saying to all of those that are his followers, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. And he's saying to those that don't know him, that haven't met him yet, I invite you to come and be a part of the marriage supper. You're invited and you can receive Christ and, and Christ is the way in. It's through Christ that we're born again. It's through Christ that our sins are forgiven. He took all your sin debt as a list and the Bible says he nailed it to his cross and he died in your place. He made a way for you to be clothed with righteousness, as we just read. And all you have to do is receive it. See, that's the beauty of an invitation. That's the beauty of a gift. It's extended to you freely. And all you have to do is receive it. For you that are servants of the Lord, you're to extend the invitation freely. For you that don't know him yet, you're welcome to receive the invitation and come to the marriage supper 
one day. So let the rejoicing begin, right? You know, this whole series began with a couple of verses in Psalm. It was Psalms 126, 5 through 6. Listen to, what, to it again. Let's end the way we began. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing precious seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with him. If we're going out and we're sowing in tears, it says doubtless will come again with rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with us. Amen. So I want to invite you to be sure that you're prepared for the Great Supper. I want to invite you, if you haven't done it, to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and your Lord. Trust Him with your life. Give Him your life. And one day, we'll stand around His throne. One day, we'll be a part of the marriage supper of the Lamb. One day, we will all come rejoicing before the Lord and praising Him. I look forward to that day, and I hope you do too.